without, without the, the power of God behind everything I do, I really am completely inadequate. I'm helping the culture. These guys are these guys are part of us as well. You know, these are guys are our, our cousin. I'm helping the culture. I'm I'm do, I'm pushing the culture forward in another way. Hey, black chow, be what you can be. Learn what you must learn. Do what you can do. And tomorrow. What do you do after you read? Oh. What do you do after you know all, right? And you and you can say that you're truly conscious. How are you putting what you know into action? This is the Initiative Radio Show, shifting the paradigm through conversation on any and everything relating to our communities and culture. Now introducing your new girl, Jasmine Renee. What's up, what's up, good morning. I hope that you guys can hear me correctly. Um, I think we're good. If you're in the chat box, let me know if you can hear me. I I think we can. I see everything going on. Um, I see the green lights going on. But what's up, it's your new girl, Jasmine Renee, here in the studio once again, another Saturday. This week went by super fast. Um, Last week, I know you guys heard me, like, talking about how I was so happy Friday came around this week i'm definitely not in that same space uh the week was definitely a little smoother it was it went a little i don't know i'm always busy and moving but i had to take the time out yesterday it was friday and i was at work and i was like i don't feel the way that i felt last week i don't feel like i just can't wait to get off work so it was either the kids were acting better, which they weren't, um, or maybe I was taking some different methods. Maybe I was resting a little more, and that was, like, the difference. So that was kind of, like, my week in a nutshell. What I took away from my week was just, um, you know, you're going to have to – I have to do these things. Like I said, I teach, and then I coach in the afternoon, so my days are very long. Um, that's not going to change. So I have to change the way that I approach things, and – this week was a prime example of me just changing the way that I approach things. So I was actually very grateful to not feel like I needed the weekend to kind of be like, oh, I probably could have went another day if that or I probably could have like did some other things um, in terms of work. So I'm very grateful for that. Um, my week was pretty cool. Nothing like it went by super fast. I feel like I was in the studio two days ago. This week went by so so fast. Um, but back to work again. I will be giving you guys about an hour of my time today because we have games once again, and I have to get to them by twelve thirty. So that's that. But um, good morning, Jackie is in the chat box. Good morning to you, mysterious Jacks and. Jackie, you're starting a show in November, correct? I cannot wait to... I actually need to hit you up about something, so be on the lookout for that. But I can't wait to to get um, to hear Jackie's point of view and the angle that she's going to be bringing to the good news. I definitely do miss your voice on the Good News Radio Show. I actually miss the Good News Radio Show. Like, I don't know if any of the people that are listening now actually listen to it, but um, I definitely missed it. When I came back from... New York and Asia, I kind of was like, I wanted to go sit in. For some reason, it was just like this random feeling to go sit in with you guys. It was a Friday, and I'm like, the show has been off for a minute. So I was just like, oh, let me go to the studio. It was like an immediate thought. I'm going to go to the studio and go sit in on the Good News at radio show. And I was like, oh, they're not even going live anymore. They don't even have a show anymore. So it was weird, but... um I definitely miss it. Maybe I can do what the Get Right did and have you guys come uh, and sit in on the show. But I definitely miss the show. And anyone that is listening now, if you love podcasts, if you enjoy radio, if you enjoy like talking and listening to different point of views, definitely download the app. If you have not downloaded the app, you are definitely tripping. Download the app. It's so convenient. You get to comment and interact with us as we're talking there's probably right now about 10 shows um there's 10 shows on the good news radio station it's an independent station i honestly do not know of any other station that's doing what we are doing in terms of like 
being able to interact with us and being able to keep up with us and then the different events that we are having, I just really don't see it. So I'm pretty sure at the level that we are with the good news, I'm pretty sure we would just know about certain things like that or we would, you know, hear about it. But in terms of like L.A., I'm just not hearing about it. And I'm very glad to be a part of what I believe to be the only like independent radio station that's actually putting out original content and then allowing people to actually like be in the mix and then also providing events where you can come and meet the people that are behind the mic. So shout out to Keith, Mysterious Jax, Robbie D, uh, DJ Dash, Dash, and um, wow, why can't I remember his name? Kev- wow, the photographer, Kevin, right? Kevin is his name, right, Jackie? Um, it's Keith and Kevin, I think. I'm having a brain fart. It might not be Kevin. I don't know. I don't know why I'm forgetting his name. Y'all know it's always something when I'm in the studio. But, uh, that's that. As far as things that are going on in the community, um, if you are free on Friday nights and you're looking for something to do and just chill, every other Friday, uh, Elena Love is... She's hosting an event that's called Culturally Cool. So I think that you guys should definitely stop by. She has a live band. And if you've been to any events, even like my events, I think K Cannon. Okay. Okay, it was Kevin. Okay, my fault. I was like, I know it's Cannon, but okay, K Kevin. I'm sorry. Anyways, if you're free every other Friday, so they just happened this Friday. So not this coming up Friday, but the Friday after that. Elaine and Love, she throws a culturally cool event. And like I said, they have a live band. And live bands give you so much of a vibe. So like that vibe that you guys, like people are always looking for when it's like being in a, at an event where like people snap in and there's a um, somebody on the piano or playing the guitar and someone's like, you know, doing some little ad libs or something like that that's kind of like the vibe that it has I haven't went but I saw so many videos uh from people posting last night so shout out to her for getting her event going and then also make sure you follow her it's all things Elena Love follow her so that you can see the flyer I have to do much better with posting events on our story because I really want you guys to start going to things and um yeah just showing up to things and I want to be a resource for you guys as best that I can but that's it and then we all know every Tuesday is unplugged at the study in Hollywood and then Sundays we have spoken word Sunday and I think that's pretty much it also the good news on October 19th Jackie correct me if I'm wrong they are having their we I guess we're a team we are having our um, game night which is a Halloween party where you can dress up if you wish to if not then you don't have to I'm sure um, and there's a whole bunch of other events I, I'm i going to post them sometime on our story this week um, just so that you guys can like be caught up with what's going on and you guys can stay up on the community type of stuff um, shout out to Taylor is this Taydog that is in the chat my good friend Tay Dog, uh, that said good morning. So yes, the game night October nineteenth. Like I said, it's a free event. Come, chill with us. Come have a great time. It'll be, um, it'll be dope. Are you guys doing a live show that night or no? I think we should do a live show if you guys haven't thought of it already. What's up, Tay Dog? Um, but yes, if you guys have not, t- Jackie, I know I'm not on the planning team here at the Good News, but. If we can slip it in, I think we should do a show at least for an hour um, while everybody is together. I think that'll be dope. Send a message to the man. I know Keith and Robbie D. That's why probably Keith is not commenting because I know they're out working in Beverly Hills um, getting that real money out in Beverly Hills. And I'm pretty sure they're just growing the brand as they always do. But yes, that is that. Anything and um yeah so that's that um i'm also feeling myself because i got my hair done 
you guys know I'm a little crazy sometimes. So I just say what's on my mind. But I got my hair done. And it's pressed. I got my hair pressed. But as you guys have seen, my hair, I dyed my hair while I was in New York. Um, and I haven't had it pressed since I've dyed my hair. So it looks really nice. So I'm kind of like feeling myself, which I always am. But I'm constantly like touching my hair while I'm in the studio because it just feels really good. Um, yeah, just another aspect of black girl magic. When we get our hair pressed, it feels good. I'm pretty sure maybe everybody's hair feels good when they get it pressed, but it feels good when it, it's curly and natural and whatever but that's just something y'all probably didn't even want to know but i'm just talking about it however if you look at the post and if that is what brought you here i posted a few things so the first thing that i'm posting is i well the first thing that i'm going to talk about is i mentioned my my week i mentioned um how I just approach things a little differently this week. And for some reason, like one of these days I posted and I went home and I was just really grateful to like be me, just really grateful, not even to be me, but to be in the space that I'm in, that I'm in to be able to look back on the experiences that I've had. Um, I constantly am talking about New York and Asia to be someone who can, in my mind recollect how it feels to be out there or to have those things to kind of like relate back to so what I posted was that growth it was a the post was like basically entitled because I'm extra it was growing and evolving and it was and I said not every day it's easy but some days I'm so grateful just to come home and sit with myself sit and just live in the moment of my growth I'm very grateful for who I am in this season of my life yes I'm grateful for my future but I'm learning not to forsake gratitude when it comes to my present self so I put that because I was literally like driving to the gas station I was driving um it was after practice me and the other coaches some of the girls went to go get food and I was just like I'm just so grateful to be where I am in life to be able to have the job that I have to be able to work two jobs and still you know have a a social life or to still be able to grow my brand even though I will say it is growing the way that I want it to grow even though I wish I could be doing more I think a lot of times we forget to like be grateful for who we are in this moment a lot of times we forget to show thanks for the progress that we've made we always look at who we used to be and maybe like frown upon it and just be like oh my gosh like that was such a horrible time in my life and then we look to the future and we get excited about the future but then a lot of times we don't look at where we are October what is today y'all I probably should have um thought about the date before I started going in on this topic I didn't know I was gonna so it's October 13th Um, so today, October 13th, like I am doing X, Y, and Z and I'm doing it well. And I'm able to wake up every day and no, not every day is easy, but I'm not where I used to be and I'm here. And I think a lot of times life becomes a little more easier when we can like sit and say, yes, I am grateful for who I am in this moment and when you have a gratitude about something it kind of like makes it easier to get through the day it makes it easier to get through the hard things when you're just grateful that you have when you have something that you're grateful for with you so that's something that i think we should definitely like take away um it's very imperative to like have that aspect of gratitude even when um You know, things are not going your way, I should say. When things are just, like, a mess. Like, even if it's a mess, what if I still have a positive outlook on it? What if I have a positive inlook on it? What if what I'm allowing to come in is positive things? So even though I know I'm going to work, you might not like your job, you might not like your boss, um... But I'm grateful and I'm not necessarily just thinking about the money, but I'm grateful that this is providing something for me. Or I'm grateful that when I come into this space, maybe it's an aspect of growth. I know a few shows ago I talked about how a lot of times we're at jobs and we sit at these jobs 
and we hate them or we hate the people that we work with but what if you go in with a different mindset what if you go in and you choose not to hate and you just allow them to be who they are and if they are negative to you then allow that to affect them don't allow it to affect you so i think that's definitely something that we can um get used to or not even get used to but we can start doing because a lot of us don't do that and like I've, I think I mentioned this, that when I went to Asia, like, the countries that we went to were super poor countries. And it really showed me how we in America have a very hard, hard time, um, like, showing gratitude for things. We have a very hard time, like, accepting the things that we have as they are. And I think when I went to Asia, that asian people definitely like accepted their whatever they were in for what it was it wasn't like oh we hate this that just wasn't the vibe that i was getting when i was out there it was mainly like just being happy and so many people like i said were asking like you know do you like is it sad out there and i'm like these people are not sad these people are not worried about how i'm living when i go back home these people are not worried about um what americans do like they're pretty much just living their life. And if they have to walk around barefoot, if they have to be dirty for a few days, if they have to go hungry or if they have to go out and get their food before they eat it because they can't go to the, the market because the market is not close, they're doing it and they're getting through it without any type of like complaining and maybe they are complaining but when i'm telling you like you can literally feel energy so even if someone is smiling in your face you can kind of feel if they aren't happy and even though we really couldn't talk to everybody the energy that was there the vibe that i got from just the entire place it was definitely like on the up and up and i'm not saying like everybody was just so happy and smiling all the time but everyone was doing their part like one thing that I kept saying while I was out there is like in my head you would just see people like carrying cases of things on little mopeds or doing who knows what and I was just kept saying like get it done like at the end of the day if you don't have anything if you don't have a truck to like carry the the cases you have to get it done if you don't have someone to put you on if you don't have anybody to invest in you you definitely need to keep going and you get it done until it happens um shout out to deja that just sat in my head who is now like adding to her team and adding so much deja iman um that came up when i was talking about like getting it done uh without even if you don't have those things that you're wishing for, Deja is an example of that. She recently um, has like a team now that's investing in her and that is going to help her progress, like her vision and her dream. But Deja has been definitely like putting forth effort into her performances. She's been conducting rehearsals and having bands come together and reaching out to people and making sure that her art is still being practiced so shout out to deja for someone that's actually an example of of that and that's something that just happened to her this week so like i'm saying she's an example of that it's somebody that we know i'm sure you guys have heard of her but um she's been putting in the work and now we're gonna get ready to see the benefits of the work that she's been putting into and now her work it's not gonna be that she's just continuing her work but it's the fact that her work is going to now be multiplied because she's gonna have more people putting into her work so i'm very proud to know um deja iman and i'm very proud to be able to witness because we've been knowing each other for maybe about a year um and just to witness like who she's becoming and for other people to see what we see in her or what i see in her to, to just be out there and just like oh yeah you are something great like yeah you've been asleep all of you guys have been asleep now it's time to wake up wake up because this is deja iman's world and we're just living in it so yes that's that but um also shout out to shout out to Everyone that's making moves is staying consistent that is now like getting what they deserve. And even like I said, even if you have not 
gotten that yet please be grateful for the work that you have done today please be grateful for what it is that you are putting into the world today like please do not go to sleep or please do not take another breath like it's that dramatic please do not do that until you realize like who I am today is worth being grateful for um who I'm going to be who I'm going to work on today is worth being grateful for I really want us to get to a mindset of like being grateful for self um I know this past week um a girl that I used to play basketball with her brother committed suicide and I'm pretty sure some of you guys listening have maybe know him or probably heard of it him um I believe his name was Amon Brown and um we're hearing a lot of people like you know committing suicide or just overdosing and just doing um things to end the pain so even if it's not that they actually killed themselves but to overdose even if you're overdosing but you just you know did not end up passing away i think that's also very serious and needs to be looked at as serious if not more serious than suicide is excuse me because you're going to continue to do that so if we can just change our outlook or the way that we look at ourselves and carry that gratitude because a lot of times people are in spaces because they feel like right now is not good enough who I am right now or my life right now is just not good enough so it is it is because you're still alive and you're still breathing so of course we know there's like criminals and stuff um that probably shouldn't have this mindset but there are a lot of us you know people who are just trying to live an honest life that feel bad about ourselves on a constant basis who you know, are going through a lot. And because we are going through a lot, it affects the way that we feel about ourselves. It affects the way that we love ourselves. So if we can genuinely, and I'm not even talking about loving ourselves because that's so much work, but if we can just say, I'm grateful for the fact that I'm able to wake up and I got maybe a paper done, or I was able to create a flyer for this idea that I have, or I was able to jot some things down, um, for this idea that I have or I was able to work through something or I got you know I wasn't as irritated today um you know I've been going through something but I didn't let it affect my day as much as it normally does I was able to live through those things if we're we show our self grace for those things I think we'll see a better outcome and then of course through that love will definitely come love of self will come because you're showing yourself grace and when people show us grace we gravitate towards them more so when you mess up and someone's like hey you know it's cool like we all mess up but you make sure that you have to get up you're nine times out of ten gonna keep going back to that person and not that they're gonna keep telling you like oh you know it's okay to mess up but they're saying like you have another chance to make it right I think that grace is what we gravitate to and where we show most of our love so that's that but also another thing that i posted if you guys are just now tuning in this is your new girl jazz renee and i am at the good news radio station here bringing to you the initiative radio show this music is giving me a vibe and putting me in a good space um i think today is just a good day but every day is a good day every day is supposed to be a good day but then also um like i posted it isn't like mandatory for you to have great days all the time it is not mandatory for you to like what is the word for you to be strong Deja and I were having a conversation and like I literally thought about that like it is not mandatory for you to like always be strong or for you to have like this facade on of where nothing tears you down I think that like it's so detrimental and especially in this day I want to also talk about like women um so Angela Rye who I love dearly I, I I genuinely love Angela Rye um she posted a post which I think is a bit problematic when it comes to who we as I, I think woman for sure but you know I always have to make things black that's the only thing I can really speak from is being a black woman um the post said let me just read the post the post says 
don't strong women don't play victim don't make themselves look pitiful don't don't point fingers they stand and they deal so it's a quote um somebody wrote it i forgot who it was but angela rye recently posted it and i think with the climate of like today it's a bit problematic to me because we're asking people to understand women we're asking people to hear the stories of women and not make it seem like oh no you can get through it or to not overlook the things that we've been through so when we say strong women don't play victim I don't think it's the act of playing victim but sometimes strong women are victim so now it's this thought like oh they don't play victim so now they'll they can never be victim to anything they always have to get through it and it's like no because now we see in the media today like there's a huge conversation around sexual harassment and now women are not even allowed to play victim when it comes to that it's like no now the man is now becoming the victim not to everybody but in the eyes that it matters the man is becoming the man is becoming the victim um because he's being accused of something and it was something that oh he was a child when this happened or he wasn't in his right mind so now we need to you know grant him grace um but because we believe that a strong woman can never be the victim it's like okay when you actually are the victim we don't believe you or we're telling you to get over it or we're telling you it was a long time ago that it's something that you know you shouldn't be thinking about now you should have healed from it by now if you're bringing it up 10 15 years after the fact um so that was one the second one was they don't make themselves look pitiful now when i think of like that comment um it to me is like who's who's there are people that do make themselves look pitiful but at the end of the day what if that is true what if they're in a pitiful state what if they are going through a lot and it's just like wearing and tearing on them um are they then not strong because of that because they chose to live in the the moment of that like is it that I'm not a strong woman because I didn't wake up with a smile on my face today? Or is it that I'm not a strong woman because something happened to me? Um, and I just could not, you know, put that facade on today that everybody wants to see. Um, and then the next one was they don't point fingers. So which also plays into the victim one. So if I am the talk that's going on a lot now, if I am a victim of something do I blame myself? Um, a lot of women do blame themselves for sexual harassment, for any kind of harassment, for being abused, um, just for a lot of things. But do I blame, like, how, why can't I put the blame on somebody else if they are the ones that did it? Um, and it's like, it goes back to that the strong woman doesn't play the victim. Like, because that's pointing the finger is kind of playing the victim. So I just think, we have to be allowed to tell our truths we have to definitely be allowed to wear who we are on our sleeves to wear who we are out loud and if we're not strong in every every day and every aspect of our life that's completely fine because there are other things that we can do you can be um inspiring to someone and just because you inspire someone it doesn't mean that you were necessarily strong in something yes an overall thing and being having strength is something that we all like strive to get but then at the end of the day we have to realize like it's not something that we always carry with us sometimes we do have weekdays and I think um the comment that I put on Instagram basically said like let me read it um being realistic with ourselves and letting the world see us in our real form so that we aren't constantly expected to carry a facade that isn't who we truly are um and i'm saying it isn't who it isn't who we really are because like i said if i have to wake up every day let's say even if you're like a single mom and you have to wake up every day and you have to get your kids ready and you have three kids and you have to go to work maybe you work two jobs and you get home late you don't get to see your kids like that mom isn't necessarily living the most glorious life 
So for her to come up and have a smile on her face all the time, she's putting up this facade that even on her bad day, she's still going to have a smile. And it's that you create some type of anxiety inside of you, because what if you literally cannot find the smile? Then you feel like, oh, I can't. I can't do, I can't produce because I'm not who the world sees me as. But if I'm able to live in my truth when it's like, yo, I'm just having a bad day. Yes, I have an attitude today. Yes, um, I'm having a hard time getting through this one thing. Like driving up here was not the easiest thing for me to do. Maybe I need time. And I'm not saying it grants you the ability or the space to be rude or negative to people. But I'm saying it grants you your truth. And a lot of times we don't live in our truth. We don't live in our truth in terms of the things that happen to us. And a lot of times we don't live in our truth when we um, go through certain things. The Our emotional truth. I think a, a lot of times it's like you can be happy or you're mad or you're happy or you're angry. And it's like, no, there are in-betweens with that. And I know especially in uh, being an educator and also being a coach you know I get a whole bunch of I'm going through a lot that's why I couldn't you know perform today or I couldn't do my work today I'm going through a lot and it's like everybody is going through a lot and a lot of adults say this too like I'm going through a lot that's why you know I probably did this is x y and z and I'm guilty of it too but then also you have to realize like if you're true to your feelings when you come into a space no one is gonna expect for you to always be one way so you won't have to apologize now if you do someone wrong yes you would have to apologize but you don't have to apologize for like not being happy you don't have to apologize for not coming in with the greatest of energy sometimes it's somebody else's day to bring the energy so I know for myself um I got to a point where it was just like I was very, very true to who I, what I felt. And if I didn't like it, um, I was very blunt about it. And it definitely got me into some spaces and situations that um, were hard to navigate around. And now I can say like going through that transition of like the negativity of it, it definitely wasn't something that I wanted to go through. So deciding to part or to be okay with being removed from something is not always easy when it's becoming like your normal. So I know earlier this year, I definitely, um, had to go through like asking myself like, okay, you're showing up for something all the time and your energy is not always great. So you might be beneficial to this thing, but are you actually beneficial to is it being beneficial to yourself and not is your brand growing or is your name getting out there but is jasmine okay when she's in this space and when jasmine leaves this space is it a relief or is it something that you want to constantly go back into and i think that was kind of what we need to ask ourselves like if we're putting ourselves in spaces where when we're in it we constantly want to get out i think we need to realign i think we need to adjust readjust who it is that we are and who it is that we're allowing ourselves to be around so with that um I just had to realize that like yes it may be growing my brand yes it may be growing who my name is it might be um something that is good for the overall vision of who Jasmine of who the brand who Jasmine wants what Jasmine wants the brand to be but it's not beneficial to jasmine and i think as we are creating especially to our creators out there we have to like be mindful of who it is that we let govern us who it is that we let be around us who it is that we allow ourselves to be around because a lot of the times um if you don't do your work your internal work before or if you don't check out who that person is or the people that you're coming into contact with prior to that um contact you get to a point where it's like oh um like now I'm my spirit is worn down every time that I'm around this person or this group my spirit is now like in shambles and if your spirit is in shambles you can't create so a lot of the times we put ourselves around things and it's like oh yeah it's growing it's kind of growing but I don't feel at ease with myself 
um, people are hearing about me, but then at the end of the day, like I'm not very happy. And I think we see that in like the mainstream world now with a lot of artists who are just like, I want to go independent or I got in the game and people kept telling me like my music wasn't going to sell or this vision that I had for myself wasn't the vision that I needed. And I think a lot of times we just have to be true to your spirit and be true to what helps your spirit. And that takes a lot of work. A lot of times we don't really know the answers to that. A lot of times we don't really know like what's going to happen or we don't even know how to check in with our spirit. So that's something that we should definitely pay attention to. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like tying in the post that I saw from this morning um, that I posted this morning about, you know, the strong woman and then even man, it goes for men too. And then lastly, the, the last part of that quote was they stand and they deal. Um, and that's kind of like tied into like the ride or die chick. Like no matter what happens, I'm going to stand here and I'm going to deal with it. I think that's not always correct because then we get like people that are upset with like Serena Williams now for not standing and dealing for actually making, um, her issue known like for actually making it known that she was not happy with something um and then like I said this quote comes at a time where the climate is very high when it comes to sexual harassment and are we just supposed to stand and deal with these things that are happening to us are we supposed to speak up on it are we supposed to fight against it so I think it is not healthy to stand and deal I think a lot of the times um if something happens to you, you can be broken down. You have the ability to do that or you have the right to be broken down at some point in time. The only thing that you have to do is get up. Um, and Sarah Jakes Roberts, she posted uh, a part of her um, sermon and she was just like, you know, my generation needs to see um, you get up. And she was talking to women and this is to men too, but like our generation needs to the kids, I'll say the younger generation needs to see that we are knocked down, that things are not easy to deal with that. Yes. Excuse me. Life gets hard sometimes, but we do get back up. We do, you know, proceed. We do um, persevere through things a lot of the times and no it's not always easy but we make it happen and I think the main part of that is they need to see you broken sometimes they need to see that you're going through things a lot of times on social media like there's this meme that's going around and it basically says um what does it say like Jesus I'm forgetting um, it says it's okay. Like it's okay to fail. It's okay to basically go through these negative things. Um, and don't compare yourself to people that are on social media because no one posts their fails. A lot of times we're not even interacting with the people that we want to be like. A lot of times we're, um, the people that we want to be like are the people that we see on social media. So we're not seeing them post their bad days or when they're having like a mental breakdown or when they're going through a lot of anxiety. So like I know on here, if you've been listening for a while, actually maybe like a year from now, um, a year, no, a year ago from now, um, I was, I don't, I know what kind of triggered it. I had, um, got let go from my job and a coach of mine and this was yeah a year ago a coach of mine um had passed away and I kind of just had like an anxiety attack um because you guys know I'm constantly moving I'm constantly moving and I was with these kids and these kids this was my first batch and I genuinely loved them so much. So now I was dealing with the second batch of kids. Um, and I just loved them so much. And being detached from them, it was just something that really, like, just bothered me in a way that um, I had never been bothered before. Because it was it was a, a bunch of them. And doing that, um, it made me feel very, like, like either something was wrong or it was just a lot and I wasn't really dealing with it the way that I needed to deal with it um so 
I initially kind of like fell into this space of having an anxiety attack and I was sitting in traffic and I definitely um like had to just stop and turn off the music and just like sit with myself and go like okay yeah you need to kind of deal with this in this moment right now you don't have um like you're in a space where you just are not going to be able to get out of this mental space until you deal with it and I kind of had to deal with it I got on a show and I talked about it and I talked to even like some friends about it and just kind of like would write about it would um go and just go sit in quiet spaces and I think for me and this may not work for everybody but for me sitting in a space where it was like I, my mind was able to just let go of things so not sitting in a room by myself because to me the literal thing was like if these thoughts are leaving or I'm trying to allow this anxiety to like lift up it's bouncing off the walls and I'm sitting in this space so it has an opportunity to come to me but if I'm sitting in a space where I can just look at the sky or I can look at things. These thoughts can now leave and not return. There's no physical boundary that I can see that is allowing these thoughts to come now back into like my space. And um, I didn't realize like when I kind of it wasn't a, a rock bottom really, but it was just a point where someone like me, I'm I'm constantly working on like evolving and in, in self-love and trying to realize who I am. Um, and not even realizing who I am, but just figuring out like my strong points. Um, it just got to a point where I'm like, I, I don't deal with anxiety well. And then I work with kids. I can't be dealing with anxiety and then go think I'm going to be great for the kids. Like that wasn't something that was going to happen. So I had to actively deal with it. Um, and being in front of kids, like you kind of have to be good. Like you have to, um, in order to definitely show them the love that they need, especially the kids that I was dealing with, you have to be like, okay, like you can't come in with the kids and think like, oh, okay, I'm doing my BS, but then I'm going to come in and try to show them love because they need like, they need a lot of genuine love. And if you don't have genuine love, you won't reach them. Um, so I really, once I became like an educator and stuff and a coach and stuff, I definitely um, start taking like, my self-care more seriously I started taking like the decisions that I was making a lot more seriously because I wanted to reach them and then since I decided to do that I've definitely like just life has been better for me I've become a better person and then I've also seen the turnaround with my kids um like it's I'm just you know I reached them um and I'm dealing with now I'm with like elementary kids um and they have autism so my class is all autistic and then um when I coach I'm dealing with high schoolers so I'm dealing with a very different wide spectrum of uh students and it's it's a lot but I have to make sure that I'm you know partaking in in self-care so we have some guests that just entered in Chris is here with me um yes we where do we meet in right before the summer the spring uh right before graduation in June yeah. Well, before June. We well, before like, June, yeah. yeah. When the kids are graduating in June. Though. Yeah. And then what's your name? Uh, Michael. Michael. Yes. Hey, Michael. How are you I'm doing? Jasmine. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You guys can chime in or comment or whatever. Um, okay. So I basically, I don't know if you saw my post, but um, I was basically talking about one thing was um, being like grateful for who we are like in this moment. Because um, mm-hmm. a lot of times we look at like our future and it's like, oh, I can't wait to get to here. And then we look at like who we were before and we're kind of like, um, you know, I'm, I'm so glad that I'm not where I used to be. But a lot of times we forget to acknowledge like who we are today in October. Like we forget to like grant ourselves grace for the work that we did to get us from where we used to be. Um, and then just like being true to yourself and because a lot of times, like, especially with social media and stuff, like we, we put on facades and we put on these, um, facades of like always being happy. And then I'm pretty sure when we interact with people, it's always like, I need to be happy. I need to be this. I need to be that. But it's like, when you're not happy, people are still expecting for you to be happy. So why not? You are right. So why not just show your true emotions and so that you don't have to carry this smile in your back pocket all the time and you can just show who it is that you are um so those are just things so 
Um, I know you posted um, Amon, so yeah. I played basketball with his sister. Okay. Um, yeah. So, I know, I know his sister. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that was definitely shocking, and I didn't know him, but I knew his sister. So I'm right. like, knowing his sister is just like knowing someone that just lose someone in- loses someone instantly like that is definitely. Um, devastating yeah Yeah. and i'm like you know when they told me i'm like no i don't know him and they were like well it's lex's brother and i'm like um wow like she must be like hurting right now because that's very sudden and then like all the tweets and stuff were basically like yeah because i found out on twitter i got on twitter and um i don't even know the guy like Mm -hmm. i just you know how twitter is right um and i seen he said rest in peace amon and i'm like what this is my friend what are you talking about you know and there's only one Amon. Well, one Amon yeah. that everybody's going to be talking about. I right. mean, you know? Yeah. I'm on Twitter. People saying, like, you know, I just seen you last night. Like, yesterday. They were, like, yesterday. And then even on yeah. his, um, like, you know, social media and stuff. They were, like, he just posted this. Or I was just talking to you. Yeah. Um, and I think, like, in society, we make it. We feel like, you know, we tell people. And I'm guilty of this as well. Like, you know. Oh, you need to be strong. Like, be strong. Even when yeah. my kids come in and they're like, "Oh, you know, so and so, you know, passed away, or whatever." And I'm like, "Be strong." And then the post that I posted, it was like, "Being strong is not always mandatory." And sometimes you need that vulnerable moment, though. Yeah. You know? And um, I was listening to you on the way here because I was like, yes. you know, I got to make sure I'm paying attention because I don't want to get caught off guard. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, um, talking about myself, just kind of more so. Like, I remember growing up, like you know. Um, I was kind of like the little spoiled, the spoiled mm-hmm. nephew, the spoiled grandson. Mm-hmm. I still am to this day, but I just know that my my cousin, my older cousin, and my older brother, they always would pick on me. You know, uh, I run in the house crying. It's just like my my mom would be like, uh, you know, go outside, be a man, mm-hmm. be a boy, instead of kind of taking me in in that moment and just kind of more so embracing me. You know, right. Um, yeah, that that was just something that kind of came in my head when I heard you talking about it earlier when I was on my way here. Yeah, and I think that's something because I mean, even with our like young black boys, since I've been an educator, it's just like how they don't know how to properly deal with emotions, and right. we saw that with say, the Billys mm-hmm, and Trues and all mm-hmm, of them. Definitely. Um, hey, but I love those kids. Though. I, and I love the, them. The worst gen- ones right, love. and crazy, crazy. But I was looking at my phone and seeing some little videos of True. Yeah, when he was rapping, rapping little control. boy True or whatever he's called. Little boy Blue. Him. Little boy Blue. <laughs> but um, they don't know how to properly deal with their emotions, mm-hmm. and um, you know, they were like what five six yeah so then even imagine like if there's no type of structure structure at all and then they get into middle school and now they're growing men Mm -hmm. and they're older they get into middle school they get into high school and still nobody is trying to show them how to properly yes and they still do that so like with me a lot of people are like oh you always trying to like give you know people the benefit of the doubt or do this and that and i'm like it's not that i'm trying to give people the benefit of the doubt but i'm also i'm saying that they need to be shown grace but i'm also saying that there's a certain application that needs to be applied so it's not that okay no just let you know Lil ryan be who he is even though he's throwing a tantrum but it's no let him do what he's doing tell him that he's wrong but Mm -hmm. then we need to have a corrective Mm -hmm. type of thing going on where it's not that we're just oh it's not just show people grace like that's not and being an advocate for people you can't just go oh we're gonna just show them grace and move from that like you have to definitely show grace and then also be there for the reprimand and then be there if they fall again and then if they do well you have to be there to congratulate them like it's not just a oh everybody's okay and even though you're acting up you're fine like no it's a process when you work with these kids like it really is. So I think um, it's molding them. Yeah, and you know you can't. You have to really, when you're dealing with clay, it only, you know, is moldable when it's yeah. wet, when, and you have to put in the most when effort it's fresh. when it's yeah when it's fresh. Mm-hmm. And if you wait too long, it hardens. So you have to really right. be there and sit with that with that thing for a long time. The same thing with the kids. Yeah. Um, you know, you typically have them for about a year. You know, when you're teaching, so it's just like. You have to do the work. And a lot of people, they're like, you know, well, 
you, and that year makes a difference. It and does. That, that year makes a difference. You it's think about it, kids are with you like eight hours out of the day. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like you are who they look up to. They with right. especially like when you're dealing with elementary. You know, the elementary kids are with you all day. Junior high, you know, you see them all year, but you only with them for an hour. You know, um, so definitely with elementary, like I think that's an important place to be molding kids. Yeah, because once they get um, middle school, I, I love middle school, but it's a they kind of set in some ways there. Yeah, they're <laughs> set in some ways, they're and older. they're, they're getting, getting older, and you definitely older. have to like get them. Like you gotta be, you gotta be stern with the middle school. You have to be stern, yes, but you can't come in like they have to respect you, like definitely on point, like yeah. right when you, you know, you have to let them know, like yo, no plan around. Um, but we have a comment when it comes to showing who you are. It also depends on the space because a lot of the time who cares? The show must go on. I think so too. I think the space does definitely matter, but I think, um, you can choose not to disclose information. Yes. Like I'm not saying go out and like dump your life story on everybody. But I think a lot of times, even if it's, I don't want to show up to this space today because I'm not feeling well. Um, mentally and I'm not saying like you physically are going through an ailment but if you're just mentally like I'm not in this space not showing up is doing yourself a service or um, maybe even going and maybe like just being to yourself or doing something like that where it's not that you have to disclose the information but I think having a smile or putting a smile on all the time is just not realistic Um, and like I was talking about the sexual harassment cases, now we're expecting people to like, just be happy all the time. Um, and it's like, Oh, I know you were going through this, but it's too late. Like, you know, why are you bringing it up now? Five, 10 years later. And it's like, well, I thought that this is what you guys wanted for me to not, you know, put it out there. But now, you know, it's kind of affecting me in a way. So now I need to put it out there. Like now I want to turn on my true feelings and I want to put it out there. So I think, if we do become like true to our our feelings um and it's like if i come into this space and you're being true to who you are um emotionally and you are and i am then it's like we all know that we have our days yeah so you get into spaces where it's like you're not not that you necessarily have to care but you're showing more grace to me like okay she just doing what it is and and it's not like oh well she tripping so Mm -hmm. let me leave her alone you know that's usually what it is right so it's like, but you're shown grace. And I think a lot of the times if we, a lot of times we don't show ourselves grace. Um, but if we get into this aspect of even showing ourselves grace, we'll be able to like show others grace. Um, a lot of times we don't understand what that looks like, what that feels like. And just being black, like we're not shown grace in most cases. We're not shown grace by other black people most of the time. So it starts in the home. Yeah. Mm hmm. And a lot of times it's just not there. Like you said, your mom was just like, oh, there be a man. And it's like, well, how? Like, you know, how does that work? Like, show me. Um, So, yeah, that's the thing. But um, you know what? I want to piggyback on something real quick from (laughs) last week. Okay. Um, You know, I heard you. You talked about when you were in Asia and like you was on this cleanse. Mm hmm. I took that into consideration. I okay. started this Monday. Okay. You know, um, it's going pretty good. I had a little slip up, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to be back on track with it. Um, I'm basically doing this more for myself, mm. you know, um, you don't know cause you kind of just met me <laughs> at the, uh, the last school, but right. I used to basically be out there job after job after job you know what i mean and it kind of like put me in a place where it's just kind of like why am i not holding down these jobs like Mm -hmm. i'm you know i'm good i'm good with the kids like Mm -hmm. it's just always something happening you know what i mean and i just felt like i just wasn't one with the universe and i needed to like surrender to to god you know what i mean and just kind of cleanse my soul just so i can get some good things back in return Mm -hmm. and uh just to feel better you know like you said like i was in this place and i'm trying to come out of this place and Mm -hmm. i don't really want to label it as depression because that's not something that i want to claim Mm -hmm. but um yeah i just had days like sometimes i just wake up and just like dude i do not feel like doing nothing right Mm -hmm. now like you know i call him in the morning we i talk to like three of my friends every morning like i don't feel like getting out the bed today i'm just tired Mm -hmm. you know and my one homegirl is just like why are you tired you don't do nothing every day i'm like 
I'm just tired. I'm tired of just being tired. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just in this space. So I, that's exactly why I went on this cleanse. Just, I just need to be in a better space. You know, mm-hmm. I want to come out on top. Um, yeah. Hey, Amen. <laughs> that, I mean, it's a, a lot of the times because we carry a lot of things with us, like, For a long time. And Mm -hmm. then especially when you get into, like, adulthood, you kind of are like, especially with black people, we are just thrown to the wolves. Mm -hmm. And it's like, go figure it out. Go do what you need to do. And it's like, okay. But then we carry, like, these things that we've been, I don't want to say negatively taught, but we've carried these things so like with the black boys, they've carried not knowing how to deal with their emotions with them right. all the way up until they're a man. Mm-hmm. So it would only be right for a cleanse to happen so that they can actually see things. And I think once we reach um, like adulthood, you kind of do have to go through those cleanses. Mm-hmm. I think <clears throat> I'm always talking about black people, but especially in being a black person, because with me, I went to a, a private like all white school for all of elementary so k through through six and then i went to like some diverse schools so it was never really seeing like a picture of who i was and it was always like these microaggressions that i didn't know that i was dealing with until i look back now and i'm like i just thought that was like a bullying thing but i realize now it was because i was black in a space where i wasn't represented Mm -hmm. um and then a lot of times even teachers would do stuff to like would say things and i'm like now that i look back there are things that i remember but i'm like okay race could have definitely been a factor so that has to be cleansed you have to like get over those things and then cleanse yourself to now go into a world that is basically going to do the same thing to you definitely. um mm-hmm. with black men like just being targets like a cleanse is necessary for you to like really just think like okay i need to be able to get through life without having anxiety about running into it with i mean getting into it with a cop or getting into it with a white woman or a white man who has no type of authority in your life but those are things that like we just suffer from because now you see it's it's white people all over that are just like gunning like they don't they don't need anything they don't care and they're just gunning for black people or people you know of color that are not black um and it's just being a black person like we have to cleanse ourselves all the time um and it's not just about like what we eat i know a lot of people are like vegan i'm like you ain't gonna find me doing vegan no time soon ever <laughs> um hey, but i gave up meat for the two I months need my meat. You, I, oh you're not eating meat well now? you know what i'm <clears throat> i guess i would call it a pescatarian like i'm still eating the seafood Fish? okay yeah uh, but everything goes. I kind of cut it off the diet for the two months that I'm on the clean. Okay. Yeah. And it's, that's so, I did mine starting in October last year and did it all the way up until January. Oh. Um, yeah. And it was supposed to be for a month, but, um, I brought eating meat back. Um, but then I still kept like the no sex thing and I still kept the no alcohol thing for the rest you know of the year. That too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it, I mean, it it's a, right it's a, it came right in time. It, it's a good, it's a good, um, thing to just deal with. Um, Definitely. and it was like, I just, you know, I just had to do it because like I said, I was just, I said last week I was just attracting the wrong kind of men. Like, mm-hmm. and it wasn't that they were just like bad people i was you know just attracting the wrong kind right. and um it nothing was going to end in a long-term relationship or marriage and that's what i wanted so it was like okay you need to now attract that but it was like everything that was coming my way there was no way possible for it to now last long um and then like i said now a year ago that's when i kind of did that and um now i'm in a relationship okay. so i found you know uh, this guy well, I didn't find him <laughs> But um Yeah so I'm in a relationship now Thank And it you. came Thank you Um Ooh. But yeah It came We met in like March Um And you know I'm very spiritual So I literally was like If I continue this I With talking to God I was just like If I continue it This I probably Said this prayer In like Around this time In October Like mm-hmm. let me find somebody That is for me right. Um and I was just like, I don't know, like, if you'll actually do it. Um, mm-hmm. But okay. And then somebody came along um, that I thought, I'm like, oh, this happened quick or whatever. 
that wasn't the person. Um, so I kind of had to like, all right, wait, be patient. So, I mean, if you think about it, January, I stopped in March. That's when I met my dude. And then the rest is history. But, um, you know, I hate to be like, this is what you need to do to get a, you know, get mm-hmm, the, the man mm-hmm. of your dreams or whatever. Like, no, but it's a thought. And at the end of the day, like I became a better person out of it. So even right. if now, if I was still single, yourself. yeah, I became a better person out of that. And, you know, my life has like progressed a lot. I've been granted a whole bunch of um, just opportunities mm-hmm. within the past year because I was just like, I need to become a in charge of like my growth and who i am as a person Mm -hmm. yeah so if you are listening and you think like oh you know what can i do there's even if it's just you want a new scenery like a cleanse provides that um and you just think of those things and i'm not saying it has to be what i did or what chris is doing but it definitely has to be um what you think is holding you back like those things that you think are you know holding your mind like captive in a way um those things that you kind of like are second guessing yourself like who can i really let this go like more times than not you need to let it go um and it's not forever it's just give yourself a time um it also practices discipline um and then at the end of it you'll see like results if you're true to it you'll definitely see results and you'll see yourself like i said practicing discipline and then you'll see how you react with the absence of those things um i just want to add one more thing to it make sure you know you include faith Mm -hmm. you know um without it it's not gonna happen Mm -hmm. and you're not gonna even have your heart in it you know um you gotta believe that it can happen right um and just surrender yourself like it's 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 important right you know um good things have happened to me uh not in this week but just a little prior to it because i had been talking about the cleanse for like two weeks or so and then i heard you talking about it last week and i was just like i think that might be a sign for Mm -hmm. me you know but yeah it's cool um have faith in it definitely yeah I think faith is very necessary and like I always say even if you don't um like believe in God or whatever your you know whatever it is whatever ideologies you believe in um look at definitions of of words and and faith is just having a belief in something that you just can't see in the moment um so you don't have to attach God or spirituality to it but just believing that you will be a better person after the cleanse is having faith um believing that you know you will get something after whatever it is that you're doing is having faith so definitely operate in that um but yeah that's pretty much it on that topic um i was gonna um talk a little bit about um this kanye thing have you guys been mm-hmm. keeping up on it you know what? I don't not really kanye. but i've been hearing about it <laughs> i've been hearing I about like it him, too but it's just this thing yeah and that's kind of where i am i've did a few shows of like not necessarily defending him but just kind of giving like a new perspective on what it is that he's doing um but i thought that he got to a point where he was like he realized sitting with trump was or or siding with trump was negative but then he started like sitting with him but he sat with him yesterday or the day before Mm -hmm. and i was like i thought after when he was like oh the slavery is a choice thing Mm -hmm. i thought he realized like okay i'm wilding let me you know let me chill out yeah let me chill out but then he like took like five leaps you know forward um and some of the stuff like today i saw a video um of the interaction with him and trump at the white house and he was like um talking about larry hoover i think his name is the dude from chicago the like og from chicago that's in jail now Mm -hmm. um and he was just like um saying that like our boys not even our boys, but just our kids. And speaking of the kids in Chicago, the black kids, of course, they need like structure, not structure, but they need things that are going to get them to be interested in what it is that they're teaching, which is understandable. So that's why I'm like, some of the things that he's saying are actually factual, but I think, I don't know, like, 
where he's going like with it at all and i'm like yes our kids he was saying you know playing sports helps with math learning music helps with meditation um if you put different things in front of them they will in return learn and he was like our boys are doing so bad because it's boring and he was like when it comes to add or adhd he was like a lot of our boys and i know this for a fact that a lot of our black boys are very smart and intelligent but Mm -hmm. they might fall off do the work and then they'll start acting up so then We don't look at the fact that they did the work well. We just look at the fact that they was acting up most of the class. Mm -hmm. Um, And that, you know, it happens. And it's like, yes, he's right because of that. And he talked about um, Hoover. And it was just like, um, so he's just wrapping it all up. He's a, like, a head OG, big homie. Like, he runs a lot of stuff or ran a lot of stuff in chicago um and apparently he was trying to change his life but then they ended up finding out that he started creating like nonprofits and stuff but a lot of the nonprofits were just creating money so that the drug stuff can run mm-hmm. um so it's like was he trying to change his life or was he not whatever and even in prison like he was still making a lot of calls from prison um and he said, you know, he needs to be let out. He needs to see his family and stuff like that. And he was like, right before he decided, right after he decided to change his life and be a new person, they took him to prison. And I'm like, um, I feel that. But then if the facts are showing that that's who he is and it's like, no, he doesn't get to get out, need yeah, to get out. He got to pay the time. He has to pay the time. Definitely. But then also, like, I do understand that. Our correctional facilities are not correctional facilities. They are basically like holding pins. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do definitely agree that we de- do need, just like other countries do, need to push for correctional facilities that correct negative behavior. Right. Um, and we don't even see negative behavior being corrected in schools. We kind of see them also being like, oh, you have to go home mm-hmm. or you're just not good. Or they're sent to the office the, the office, they're or they're sent day. to the um, the RSP rooms uh-huh. where they're told that they have a mental disability or a mental right. delay at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're not really being dealt with. So I think there is some truth into what Kanye is saying. But I just think the way that he's going about like trying to bring or trying he's not even trying to bring trump in as an ally to us he's trying to be an ally for trump and i think that's the negative thing now if he was trying to bring trump on this side it would be a little more understandable it would still like raise eyebrows but it's like you're trying to be his ally and even trump was like because he was like you know i love you trump or he was like i don't want to put you in that light because trump knows who trump is trump knows what people perceive of him and he's like i don't want to put you there and he's like no i'm gonna tell you like i love you and trump is like yo like you're good like (laughs) you know like you don't have to say that like i understand that you respect me you're here but you don't have to like you know i don't want you to keep putting yourself here and it's like yo we think that trump is crazy and this (laughs) dude is telling you to chill because he knows how people perceive him and he's like you kind of need to keep your image like I liked you because of who you were. Mm-hmm. And now you're trying to be like me. And this is not, <laughs> not like, working. no, this is not it. So, um, I don't know. And then I saw a tweet, which I feel like is going to be some type of truth. Um, and it was like, watch Kim Kardashian's storyline oh, yeah. next year is going to be like, she was fearful for her life and she had to get her kids away from him. Mm-hmm. And, um, he was just doing the most and and i'm like tweets like that usually because you know like when stuff happens and then somebody's like oh my gosh somebody tweeted about it yeah. like months ago or whatever so i guess some videos came up about the upcoming season um wow. that will be coming out and i guess um they didn't put everything yeah oh. um and he kim was basically like they were showing clips of her talking about kanye mm-hmm. and it kind of seemed like she was talking about her being like fearful of like who he has become. Um, and I'm like, of course that narrative is going to work because he's a black man. Mm-hmm. So regardless of who he married or who he's sitting with at the end of the day, when we look at Kanye, even without the name Kanye, he's a black man. So if anybody says that they're fearful of him, that's going to be believed by um, more people than not. Yeah, so I'm like, um, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. I feel like Kanye is definitely like 
pushing towards his downfall. I love his music. Um, I love the music. That's why I, I love I don't his music. Pay attention to right. like social media. And I'm like, I can kind of separate the two because even with his last album, people were just like, how are you listening to his music? Even, you know, while he's saying like slavery is a choice and this and that and the other. And I was just like, I feel like your music is not necessarily like. Yes, it is a reflection of you, but if you're saying, like, BS on the side, but your music is, like, Good. you know, it creates a vibe. It's just, like, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. And it's, like, I feel like Kim is not, like, bettering him as a man. Yeah, definitely. She's definitely hindering him. Yeah, and I feel like he's just not, and his mom is not here. It might be those kids. It might be the kids. She put those kids on him and now. Yeah. And I'm like, his mom, you know, is not here. So I'm like, where is he getting that, like, nurturing from? You know, like, where is he getting that, like, care that a mother would give? Because, you know, once you get married, it's typically supposed to come from, like, your wife. And I'm like, what he's used to is a black woman, and Kim Kardashian is not. She might be giving him something, but I don't think it's what he needs. So we'll see what happens with that. But um, anything else that happened this week that y'all want to... About. I got a new job. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, I'm going to be at Square Elementary. Where? Square Elementary. Okay. Uh, it's on the west side. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Congrats to Thank new jobs you. and new, new, just new everything. Adventures um, and things. Mm-hmm. Yes. But yeah, um, but that's pretty much it. Did you want to talk a little about, a bit about your show? Uh... <laughs> Just be on the lookout for it. It's called the Sunday Dinner Show. Yes. Uh, Instagram Sunday Dinner Show at Sunday Dinner Show. Yes. So make sure you check them out. Um, I will post something with the so you guys can click on the the um what's it called a screen name on Instagram. I don't. Don't yeah, ask username. Me. I'm I don't not know. even with the Instagram <laughs> name. Yeah, Instagram. <laughs> yeah, name. Okay. Yeah, I, right. So you guys can click on their Instagram name. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I appreciate you guys for stopping Thank in. You for having me. Thank yes, you. of course. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I just kind of wanted to shed light on some of those things and kind of wanted to like open people's eyes on like the problematic thinking that we kind of put towards women um, and men for that matter. I think black people in general, like there's always this need to be strong or to knock down walls or to withstand the negative treatment um until we die and i think it's not showing to be beneficial to us um because if you think about it like our ancestors had to withstand slavery um and then even after that it was withstanding like the jim crow era and then after that you know with the segregation laws and all of that and then now we're told to like withstand um you know being shot and killed by cops and innocent bystanders or i guess they're not innocent but by bystanders um and they're getting off so it's like uh how long are we supposed to do this as a people um and we're, we show a lot of grace to others and we don't show grace to ourselves and i think right. that's a a huge problem but that's pretty much it um the takeaway for this week would just basically be like i said um be grateful find something to be grateful for today um and then when you get to tomorrow find something to be grateful for tomorrow um but don't be on the move so much or constantly trying to get to your future that you forget to recognize yourself in the moment that you are in um because growth won't come if you aren't celebrating who you are in that moment so continue to celebrate yourself in the moment that you are in love yourself so much now um so that you can be a better person once you get to where you're going but yeah that's pretty much it um you want to drop your instagram names uh uh, mine is at k-u-x-n-t and that's chris big cat and then yours and mine is o-n-e-m-o R R S T Y L E and I'm a photographer. Okay, cool. So these are our guests for today. I really appreciate you guys Thank you for, for coming. For um us. yeah, but make sure you guys tune in next Saturday at ten. Um I'm here every Saturday and then um 
make sure you send me the reviews or however you feel about the show repost it um tell your friends about it i hope that it was beneficial for you guys and then also if you guys have any events or even any ideas of what you think should be talked about on the show in the upcoming weeks let me know and uh i will do my best to like do my own research and maybe even get somebody to come in that can help me talk about it but i appreciate you guys for listening have a blessed week